All right, few things for the DASA engine. Okay. Uh, some friends have said, why, uh, why you didn't use fire? Why do you didn't warm it up to come out? It's very simple. I didn't want to uh, destroy the seal. I didn't want to... Um, in, from inside, you can see that I'm insane. And there are also guides. I didn't want to warm up this side over there. I didn't want to cause anything, any more problem, let us say. Uh, I wish and I hope that when I remove, let us say, the dual mass flywheel, that was my plan from the first place, that will be nice and safe and I'm going to be able to insert again the new dual mass flywheel. Let us say, file a little bit if there is any high spot on the crankshaft and put it in. That's why I was willing also to measure it with a micrometer to see that's true, that's round and it's not, let us say, uh, it's not been compromised. <coughs> because the inner, this one, this one, it's to align properly the dual mass flywheel, to don't have an offset. Okay? And it, it's come usually tight. There is a, it's a tight fit. It's not loose. So it's important because it's also for the forces at the same time. Now, because, like I said, because it was wobbling the dual mass flywheel, it ended up to be like a friction uh, weld because of the, it was so much tight, the clearance, if you like. It's not been designed to run, um, to, to rub, let us say, the flywheel on the crankshaft like that. And that's why you see the hot spot and it ended up like it will start welding it together with the crankshaft. Fortunately, it didn't get weld. Otherwise, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be the same, the same thing. It's going to be worse for me to take it out. So I didn't want to use a fire, honestly. Now, uh, my approach from the beginning. The engine, the car, it was running fine, perfect, without any problem for more than 10 months. Because I talked to the owner. Uh, he came here when he said to me that, you know what, I melt a spark plug on the number two cylinder. And now I have a knocking sound from the engine. When I received the, the car, I didn't start it. First, I pull out the spark plugs. I check inside with the camera. Uh, then I check the oil, I get the compression pressure from, the, from each cylinder to see that it's okay, that it doesn't have any problem, and to see that it's safe to crank the engine. I check the oil pan, the oil filter, there was some small pieces inside, but nothing crazy, let us say, nothing to, to say that, you know what, okay, it's gone. Then I, I saw the damper pulley that was loose. When we were cranking the engine, I hear the sound from the flywheel, from the side of the transmission, obviously. But from the side of the transmission, you have also the number one cylinder, right? <clears throat> and you have also the timing chain, you have the cam adjusters, you have so many things over there. So, my next step was, like I said, I, I, I start also the engine without the damper pulley, just to hear the sound, and the sound was exactly the same. So I knew that there was a problem from the transmission side. Since there was a problem with the damper pulley, I said, let's address this problem to be sure. And then we're going to move on to remove the transmission. I don't want to start. There is, for me, there is an order. I cannot jump from one side to the other. I cannot, let us say, when I receive the car, I cannot start it direct and hear the sound. Because you can create, you can make a bigger problem from this point of view. So that's why I went like this, how I went. To, to open, let us say, the oil pan, the only thing what you need to put, it's just only to apply sealant again. The damper pulley, we have to change it because the previous one, it was gone. All right. So that's why I follow these steps. And even if I go back in time, I'm going to follow the same uh, thing. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to change anything. Uh, that, this is reasonable for me, at least. Okay. Now, pay attention. I didn't install this dual mass flywheel from the beginning. Uh, the owner, he went to another garage, okay, and they installed for him the dual mass flywheel. He didn't, uh, he didn't make more than a month with this dual mass flywheel, and this is what happened. My theory, my theory, I don't want to say anything, I don't want to blame anybody, all right? It's not the case. I'm just saying one scenario, all right? You see, the washer, you see the, this is the reading wheel, okay, that's reading the crankshaft washer sensor out of this uh, reading wheel. You see the, the thin washer that has inside, that it comes apart. And you see also the holes that became like an egg here inside. So, first, first he melted the spark plug, and then it came the sound. My question is, what if 
when he was pushing the car, keep in mind, it's heavily tuned the car, right? It has a turbo upgrade, has external wastegate, has ported cylinder head, um, uh, springs, retainers, valves, everything. Okay, piece connecting rods. Okay, this is for reliability. It's not for... Uh... Anyhow, so again, we're not talking about a stock application. Forget it, okay? <clears throat> so what I'm saying, it's heavily tuned, let us say, and the tune is on the limit, because for competition, let us say the car or whatever, okay? And then the reading plate here, it starts playing. Because you, you can see, like I said, how it became the, um, the holes, all right? So if it's playing one degree front and back randomly, or maybe more than one degree, for example, <clears throat> this will have effect. This will have effect because when you're on the limit with the tune, it can screw you up, this one. My scenario, my theory, again, I might be wrong, but that's, like I said, obviously, this is my opinion, all right? <clears throat> what I believe. Under load, when it was accelerating, it was, it lost the sink, or let us say it was not accurate what was reading from the crankshaft of the sensor. He melted the spark plug. Fortunately, it was only the spark plug. The dual mass flow was already loose, and then it will start losing also the uh, damper pulley. There is also another one scenario that they was holding the damper pulley from this side to be able to torque down the dual mass flywheel. I believe also that, because you need the special tool to lock it, and you need also the other tool to hold damper pulley, the, the other tool that I showed you before how I torque it down and how to spin the engine. So if you don't have these two tools, why I'm saying that? If you don't lock the crankshaft, how can I give here 50 Nm and 90 degrees? You see, for me, I make, uh, put an extension, I bring here the... I put the magnet on the shock absorber, I bring it here, and then I was able to give it 90 degrees. From the other side, if you remove the transmission, you don't have the space to put the torque wrench there, and let us say, torque it down at 60 Nm, and then give the 90 degrees, for a very simple reason, because the torque wrench is going to be like that. If you try to put like this, it's hitting on the firewall. So, if you don't have the correct tools, if you don't lock properly the crankshaft, how are you going to torque it down properly? That's my question. That's the number one. Uh, second, the owner of this car, he said to me that, you know what, uh, this uh, dual mass flywheel, he, he installed it somebody, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say his name, he said that uh, he was working with you, that guy, and he showed me also his picture. I have never seen that guy in my life. First time I see that guy. I don't know, maybe it's uh, that guy that he says that we was working together, um, but I'm sorry, I haven't seen him before. <laughs> First time I, uh, he showed me the, his picture, and uh, he gave me his name, and from where is that guy, but I'm sorry, I have never worked with him. No, I don't know. I don't know how we end up to be to working together with somebody that I don't know him. <laughs> that's a different story. Like I said, that's my scenario. Because this happened in less than a month after installing the dual mass flywheel. For 10, 11 months, the engine was performing fine. He didn't have any problem. He made very good numbers. The owner has so many videos of the car. Uh, and then you change the, you put the upgrade uh, dual mass flywheel and you have all these problems. Like I said, if let us say I didn't torque down the damper pulley, for example, you're gonna get away with what? One, two weeks, one month, two months. You're never gonna be able to drive the car, not driving normal, okay? Pushing the car for 10, 11 months. And then when you change the dual mass flywheel in less than a month to happen all these problems. From this point of view, I'm not pointing at anybody. I'm just saying my opinion, what I have in front of me. Okay, I wish, but I cannot do it that obviously. I wish I can go back in time and say to the owner, you know what? Come, I'll gonna install it for you for free if you uh, if you think about the money, you know, <laughs> to don't have this kind of problems. Because now, what need to be done? <sighs> need to remove the crankshaft out, see the bearings. If the bearings are gone, the number one and the number five, because this will gonna suffer much more than the rest. If the bearings are, on, are uh, gone, then we are going for crankshaft. If the crankshaft main bearings are okay and they don't have any problem, we might fill up this space that has to center the dual mass flywheel and then center the machine shop and make it perfect fit with a new 
dual mass flywheel. To clean, let us say, the face front, because again, you can play with the washers. There is a thin washer to, to, to give the offset. Let us say, for example, if from the crankshaft to just to clean it, you remove one ton of millimeter, example, you can get a washer like this and put the sensor one ton of millimeter more out, and you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna have any problem. That means the missing material, you're gonna add it here, and it's not a critical. It's, we are talking about one ton of millimeter. The, the other thing here, the round, to be perfect round, you're gonna get filled up, and then you're gonna get machined to center the dual mass flywheel properly. The dual mass flywheel, it has to be center, you know, because if it was only the bolts, you're gonna make this movement. It's not gonna be straight. So that's the story. I hope that I'm clear with what I'm saying. That I'm sorry that that guy, I don't know him, and I never worked with that guy before, okay? Uh, that's what my theory, my scenario for what happened. And this is my approach from the first place. Removing the sparlocks, checking with the camera, like I said, get the compression pressure, check the oil. Actually, what I did, I have one long stick that's flat. And what I did, I bring each piston at top dead center, and then I was pulling it down with a crankshaft. And then I was pushing it up. That means it reached up, and then it was coming down. And then I put the stick on the piston, and I push it down to see if there's any problem with the wrist pin, just in case, to see if there is, if make clack. You know, or the connection bearing. And when I saw that it was safe, then I put a fresh oil and I start the engine. I did, again, I don't want to make more damage. I can easily, let us say, start the engine, start accelerating, and put on the video the sound that's making the dual mass flywheel. I didn't do that. I start the engine for a couple of seconds just only to hit it and I switched off. I didn't want to produce any more problem. Okay? If you understand what I'm saying. So, that's the story. Removing the engine, I want to see when I'm going to have the time to open also this engine. Uh, I'm going to remove only the timing components, obviously, with the timing chain. Uh, Omar, he said to me, ah, you know, the diesels have a gears. Yes, but it's not a diesel. <laughs> it's not from a truck. On the diesel, there is a gear, and you can remove only the crankshaft and finish the story, and call it a day. Uh, this is not the case <laughs> with these cars. Not only with this one, in general. Uh, that's it for now. Next video, the guys are going to remove for me the engine. They almost remove it. They have the table here. Putting it on the engine stand. Preparing the car to throw it out. Put the cross member, put the shafts back in place. Don't open the bearing. We're going to cover it. We're going to remove the battery to have it uh, inside here to don't drain. We're going to charge it every, every week or every two weeks, let us say. And yeah, and that's it. Now, like I said yesterday, to my friend, need the inner washer that has behind of the uh, sensor, the, or not sensor, the, the wheel, okay? Need the wheel, need the other washer that comes from, because there are, there are two, there is one back, one front. And actually, if we get two, three more washers, we're gonna be better as a backup, just in case if we face it, because very thin washers, this front. I don't know where's the other one, honestly. Yeah. Remove the crankshaft and then start from there. See what's going on from there. Crankshaft and bearings, like I said. And if we are able to uh, machine it and to be okay, to be properly, to don't be bent the crankshaft because we have to check if it's bent or something. It's the dual mass flywheel. It's not. Uh, it has some weight on it, you know, <laughs> from this point of view. And all these vibrations. Transmission. I don't think so. We're gonna have any problem with transmission. I doubt we're gonna have any problem. I, I don't think so. The the plan was, see, if it was only the damper pulley, if the problem was let's say the damper pulley, or even the dual mass flywheel, uh, what what will gonna be the next step? For example, let us say I'm able to put the new dual mass flywheel, all right? I already installed the damper pulley. Okay, so I was willing to say to the customer, make 100 kilometers, 100 to 100 kilometers, normal driving, and let's open the oil filter to see if we have a glowing stuff if we have a glitter inside of the oil filter. Why well, I'm saying that? Because if there is any failure with the bearing, you're gonna see glitter inside of the oil filter. So that was my approach, if you like. But now, I need to remove the crankshaft. Yeah.
Okay, that's it for, uh, for that. For now, I'm going to continue with MA57 because I'm two days back. And again, yes, I spent almost one day to remove it, but I, I had some chances to be able, let us say, to put the new uh, dual mass flywheel. You know, again, I didn't do it for me. For me, I can easily, let us say, it was it's gonna be much faster, let us say, if I warm it up, make it red hot, and then start hammering it from back and throwing it out. I didn't want to do that. And I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Even if the engine was gone, I'm not gonna do that. From this point of view, I don't want to create any more problem, whatever it has up to now. I know that why you're gonna tell me, okay, why you drill the dual mass flywheel? Because there was a crack on the dual mass flywheel in two spots on the cast, on this one, and the spring has a crack. This can be, let us say, this may be crack when it came loose and has vibrations. Or there is another scenario, maybe it cracked the dual mass flywheel and it caused all the problems. I don't know. I can just only guess. Right? That's it. If I was the one that I torqued down the dual mass flywheel, I can tell you that, you know what? Yes, I torqued it down to specs. I put a Loctite, let us say. I, I give 60 Nm plus 90 degrees on the dual mass flywheel. You cannot torque it more with a new bolt, let us say. And then this happened. So if it was that the case, I can tell you that, you know what? First it cracked the, dump, the dual mass flywheel. And then from the vibrations, it came loose all the bolts. I cannot prove anything of this. I cannot prove that it was torqued down properly. Or I cannot prove that it was not torqued down properly. I can give only some scenarios, theories. That's it. Thank you very much. Move on.